and I was actually, I enrolled to do a teacher education course at Durham University um, and I got headhunted by, by a, um, a management consultancy group in the Netherlands that had a, um, a, a development project, an educational development project going in the um, in Indonesia, um, for the uh, which was to help the the Sekolah Menengah Kejuruan. So uh, that's SMKI, uh, SMSR, Seni Rupa, uh, SM. Well, I can't remember all the acronyms. It was a real alphabet soup. But the one that I was recruited for was 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 SMM, which is Sekolah Menengah Musik, of which there were two: one in Jogja and one in Medan. So I was recruited as um, as a Western musician who um, was also knowledgeable about gamelan to go and um, help set up a um, a training centre for secondary teachers in this um, uh, uh, Skola Mananga Kajuruan in Jogja. In Jogja. Um, Anyway, that's another story and probably not relevant at all. So, um, but I actually left Durham to go to Jogja to do that job um, uh, in 1985, that would have been, I think January 1985. So I was there for two years. Um, and that was really my first encounter with uh, Gamelan in Indonesia, because I'd never been to Indonesia before that. And it was quite an eye-opener, of course, because the way that gamelan um, was played in both in the Netherlands and the UK at that time was actually quite different. Um, one of the big important differences, I think, was uh, the way the groups I played with until then uh, played gamelan music was always notation-based. So. Um, which meant that people could play a lot of repertoire very quickly, but they could never play it very well. And it was never very interesting, because it was like playing the telephone directory. You know, here's, here's a lot of numbers, play these numbers. Um, so it was... Um, so for me personally, as a, as a musician coming from um, Western classical music tradition, where music is learned from notation, from the partitur, from the... Uh, score to go uh, to study uh, what is essentially an oral tradition, although of course you can write things down, um, was, was a real education. So um, when I was in, living in Jogja, um, I studied with, my, well, my main teacher was um, a musician called Pak Hardi, who worked at the, the Paku Alaman. Um, and he had he had rehearsals at his house every Sunday, and I would go there and um, and, and also had some private lessons with him. Um, and of course, that was a very different way of learning the music. And um, when I was invited to play in groups, um, perform here and there, um, then of course. The challenge was finding out what piece was about to be played, um, and of course you can't you can't be rummaging around with bits of paper, with notations if um, if you don't know what's about to happen. So that was really when, for me uh, personally as a musician, that was um, how I learned to play music, really by ear as opposed to by eye and brain. So that was that was. Um, so to cut a very long story short, um, for me as a musician, gamelan has been incredibly valuable because it's kind of opened up the whole oral side of music making and playing by listening and by a certain limited amount of improvisation. And actually since, since um, subsequently I lived in, in Bandung for 12 years, no, I was in Jogja for two years, 
Bandung for 10 years, almost 10 years, so 12 years in Indonesia. And um, when I came back about uh, just over 10 years ago, I'd kind of lost interest in playing music, Western classical. I mean, I still enjoy it. I do still play it occasionally. But I came very interested in, in learning to play Western music by ear. So um, I've really become much more involved with jazz, where you play on a structure and you play by ear and reading is kind of secondary. Anyway, that's, that's kind of um, how gamelan has impacted on my own personal music, musical development. So when I was living in um, Jogja, I became very friendly uh, with one of Pahadi's other students called Joan Suyanaga, uh, a woman from um, Hawaii who was in Jogja studying literature and Javanese literature and music. And um, she was very friendly with a musician, uh, another of Pahardi's uh, students, Ereri, because Pahardi was also director of, of the Krawitan at Ereri Jogja. Um, and his, one of his young star students was a man called Suhirjan, uh, who was a very fine kandang player very fine musician. And uh, Joan and Suhir Jan became um, a couple and got married. And one of Suhir Jan's um, interests wasn't just playing gamelan, but also building gamelan. And he'd, he'd made his own uh, iron gamelan, which he played at home, um, and actually sounded very fine, made from um, steel. It wasn't, it didn't, uh, some of the instruments didn't look wonderful because they were made from old bus springs, uh, so very hard steel, um, but it sounded fantastic. Um, anyway, uh, Joan kind of got Masihirjan um, set up as a gamelan builder, or she helped him um, to set up as, as a business, really, and to uh, sell his instruments to foreigners, and there was a um, a big market um, um, in in the UK and the states and other places for inexpensive but good quality gamelan instruments. So um, enthusiasts like myself who couldn't afford to buy a, a huge fancy uh, um, gamelan built by someone like Patan Trum in in solo from bronze could still afford for the price of say a marimba could afford to buy a complete gamelan set uh, with instruments made from brass and iron like the one in the dark room or over there the gamelan room and in fact that gamelan the the javanese gamelan was the first um, iron gamelan to be imported to the uk and i think um, Suhir Jan was one of the important um, builders of the, f of the first generation of gamelan instruments. Unfortunately, I think his, from what I've heard, um, he, he had another, uh, he went to another tukang for his, uh, for his pots, his ponang, blanchon, uh, which wasn't, weren't so good quality. So I think a lot of the uh, gamelan that he made, which had been imported to the UK, have had um, serious problems with rattling rivets in the bonang pots and so on. Um, and I think my gamelan is one of the last ones he made which used uh, hard s recycled steel from springs. After that he used plate iron which is, looks nicer and is much easier to work because it's a lot softer. Um, but doesn't sound as good. 